Hello folks, welcome back to VCV Rack Instruments and Effects. I'm your host, Dr. Lawrence W. Moore of the Wayfarer Project. In this episode, um, basically I'm going to be sharing with you a patch that I made uh, that implements the sound of Tibetan singing bowls. And then while I was making that, I kind of uh, went on a tangent and made a little bit of an ambient organ sound that sounded cool with it. So I'm going to show you basically both. Um, they kind of grew out of one another and um, sounds really cool. So I figure I'll do both in the episode. But uh, this was upon request in my series Sound for Relaxation, Meditation, and Sleep. Amelia uh, requested uh, if I could add some Tibetan singing bowls. They have a beautiful sound. And in the past, I believe I played one a little bit um that a friend had and uh yeah i love the sound of them but uh, i don't have one <laughs> but as a sound designer and a synthesis i decided well let's see if i can make something that sounds very close to it i don't have an ocean either but i was able to make ocean waves and i made cricket sounds even though there's not many crickets around this time of year although spring is coming fast in any case i like to create some of these organic sounds through synthesis and uh, it's a fun process because you can kind of really make them come to life and it's almost like giving birth to a living breathing sound but anyway without further ado let me just kind of like uh show you uh what i mean here let's get on the headphones and uh here we go in VCV rack. Now this episode in general, um, this is kind of like delicate sound work here. So if you're interested in making the sound or um, just seeing how it's made, um, you're probably going to want to hear this on headphones or some good speakers. Um, uh, stereo is important. So if it's a built-in speaker on your cell phone, no matter how good it may sound, it's usually located right next to one another. So you don't hear stereo too well. Um, just being advised, you know, anyway, here we go. And now I'm going to add a little bit of melody. Okay, I think I better stop there before I put you to sleep. Uh, but in any case, that's what we're going to look at in this episode. We're basically going to make this patch from scratch so you can learn a little bit about um, the sound design behind it. I know it isn't exactly a Tibetan singing bowl. It kind of has echoes of it. And if you play it on different pitches, it could set, certainly sound a little bit uh, closer because um, what I'm using there, I'm using it as a drone. And it's a deeper tone. So, um, but anyway, I'll show you the different options and how you can kind of like style your own. All right, so let's get to it.
Okay, so here we are. Um, I'm going to basically build this from scratch. So I'm going to go up here to File and New. And there's a couple different approaches I'm going to make. Incidentally, all of the modules in this build are free modules. So VCV Rack being free. I know it does have a pro version, uh, but um, all this can be done with the free version and none of the modules that I'll be using um, require payment. So what I'm going to do here in this one is I'm going to call up a different mixer this time. I'm going to start with one of my friends, uh, a mind meld. We'll do an eight channel mixer here. And uh, I am going to add its aux expansion so we can add our reverb effect on it. Um, in the original patch I made, I just used the, uh, what do you call that, the uh, VCV mixer for channel. I mean, it works, but this will be a little bit more streamlined. It'll give me room because afterwards I think I'm going to work with this and add some rain. Uh, I don't know some other things to it uh, to see what uh, combinations I can make for my next uh, piece. So anyway, um, the heart of the sound generation is the macro oscillator from Audible Instruments. It is a free module uh, and it has a lot of different sounds in it. So I'm just going to scroll up to the one I ended up using called Ring. There we are. And then what I'll do is I'll copy this. Because I'm going to want to use two of them. Now, let's hook up the mixer to our audio out. Sorry about that. Mouse accuracy is sometimes my Achilles heel. So there we go. Mixer's hooked up. I'm going to hook up um, both of these to the channel one because it is a stereo channel. Let's turn this down just a little bit for now. But what I'm going to do is detune these in a stereo manner. So they're coming out left and right, but it's largely the same sound left and right, so it doesn't sound expansive at this point. Now, that is pretty stable tone, but um, and that's not quite realistic. The singing bowls, the beauty in them is the ever gradually changing harmonics that they produce. Um, and what you can do to produce those types of changes is some tuning things here. Um, what I'm going to do is just kind of show you some of the exploration I did. Like just there, I slightly turned the timbre knob. And you hear between the left and right sides, now we get a little bit of a, a, a gradual modulation. Now, if I turn it down more, you can get all sorts of interesting harmonic combinations. Now, if you have them apart by certain amounts, you can really hear a bit of a pulsing, a beating. And this actually, I could get binaural beating this way, and another way of doing it. That's a technique I also use in my stuff. But we also have here, oh, I was calling this timbre. I'm sorry, this is the color knob. The timbre knob here also does similar things. Now, what really kind of makes this work is something I'm going to show you here. And I kind of memorized the values 
I'm going to initialize this. The way these knobs work, um, it's a range of like, it's 50 in the middle, zero at the bottom, all the way left, and 100 all the way right. So what I did is I shifted this by ever so little, made it 49.93. And then this one, I displaced it by the same amount, the opposite direction. 50.07 and if you listen to that subtly there's a real gradual change there now we're, we're certainly not done with this by any stretch of the imagination uh, what we're going to do is go here and uh, tune this a little bit too in this case you know I probed it by just turning it down by ear something that harmonically lines up and what I put in eventually as the value was 31.03 and I did it with this one too because uh, between the left and right side um, I don't want there to be a big difference in pitch so that gives us this kind of low tone alrighty now some of the harmonics are a little bit strong and I thought a good way of dealing with that would be a little bit of comb filtering. And the Surge XT uh, module series, which is also free modules, um, has a combulator module that does that. So I'm going to take left out here. And right out, and then here's the return of the ox. Okay, and then this channel one I can send to that, and I'm going to send all of it there. You hear how that really tempered the harmonics a bit? But I played with some of uh, the settings here also. The feedback, I remember, I kind of turned that back around the other way. And comb one turned up a bit. Backed off on comb two. backed up on comb three and actually yeah we're going to back off on comb one a little bit you see the mix is all the way up so we're doing a full comb filtering here and lower the tone a little bit right about there so you hear it has attenuated some of those harmonics a little bit And you got this slow, gradual modulation or pulsing effect. Now, what we can also add, reverb. The VCV reverb is not free. It's with Rack 2 Pro. So I'll use the Surge XT reverb. The Surge modules also have presets to them. Um, I remember what I used. Was um, Cathedral 2. And I didn't really have to change any of it.
Now this is low for a Tibetan singing bowl. They do have big ones like this that would produce something around this pitch area. But you don't frequently hear them unless you hear somebody that's doing like a choir of them. Um, one thing that can be done about that is a little bit of EQing. Mind Meld does have this parametric EQ that you can basically take a send here well not a send, it's an insert out and actually this is the out uh, yellow, I do red for audio here 1 through 8 Oh no, down here, channels 1 through 8. Here's the inserts. Okay. Yeah. This can be used with the 16 channel version of this mixer. But we're using the 8 channel version right now, so here we go. You turn it. Here's our channel 1 which has both of our oscillators coming in through left and right. We can take some of this low out of it. I'm not going to keep it out because I actually like this for the drone of the stuff I was composing. Now another thing is if you want a little bit more harmonic presence here we can use a compressor push these down to be more in line with these and then boost it up overall and to do that I like to pop in here the squinky labs compressor Let me back out and zoom in a little bit this way. That way you can see my mouse cursor. Basically, we're trying to even out these harmonics with these. So what I do is take my return here. Because this Squinky Labs compressor does handle the eight channels. And it does handle even the fact that some of them may be stereo, some of them may be mono. It, it's almost like it was designed for this. It's beautiful. Okay. And we're on channel one right now. Just need to turn off the bypass. And lower the threshold. I'm going to have to lower it a lot because... There we go. Now... You won't visually see it here because this is afterwards in the chain. Actually, we could put it before it in the chain. That way we can visualize it here. Why don't we do that? All right, I'm going to have to disconnect you. All right. Go into the compressor out from the compressor into the uh, EQ then out from the EQ back to our insert return here and so now we can kinda this is before this but be evening out visually there as much but we can also boost here yeah I'm definitely hearing some of those upper harmonics be more present now now the thing is I actually do like the lower tone in it I'm just saying you know here are some options to maybe make it more of a more like a Tibetan singing bowl
Uh, maybe attenuated a bit still. And I'll raise the frequency a little bit more. Or lower it. It's a very delicate modulation, but that's the way it is, folks. Oh, and the reverb. Remember I added it? I didn't really send anything to it. Let's give it a give it its all, and we're going to switch this to Cathedral Two. Let me just double check. Oh, for some reason, I'm turning channel 2's uh, aux A instead of aux B of channel 1. Yeah, now it's definitely going through the reverb. And it has expanded it a bit. How's our width? I'm going to turn our width all the way up here. I'm going to ease this fader up a bit. No, we don't want to turn it up too much. Right about there. Now, this is not being sent any pitch information. You can I'm eventually going to do this with actually another pair of these oscillators. be default on middle C it's doing this at a delay let me just double check yeah my MIDI settings and I also want to make sure it's on monophonic yep yeah I had it set to polyphony so it was basically only triggering pitch changes here every four notes. These are monophonic modules. So you can find a note. on I think that one's the best middle C now what I'm actually going to do is not use these two modules for pitch changing I'm going to use these for a drone so they're back on the note they were playing to begin with which is a C copy and paste them and then what I'm going to do is initialize this timbre knob here because this kind of lowers the pitch a bit since I copied these we still have the left and right differential in the color knob that I find attractive so Let's just change our pitch be sent to these. So this, our original pair, is droning on a C. And it sounds like middle C. 
and I'm going to put these guys into channel 2. We'll hear it now that I get something in the left input. There we go. Now, if you just want Tibetan singing bowls, say, on this pitch, turn this one down a bit. And that sounded pretty cool. Um, let's look at channel two on our parametric EQ. We may not need this re-emphasis of this pitch here. Let's try attenuating that a bit. But I am going to compress it a bit to get some of these to be a bit more even. Now this is, uh, these two oscillators aren't even going through the effects yet. I think I should do that. Combulator all the way and about 75% for the reverb. Alright, so let's go back over here and make sure that we are compressing this as well. Gotta turn off the bypass. Make it about even with the first one. See, by compressing it and then boosting the output, we're hearing more of those harmonics, upper harmonics, that were kind of lower before. Now they're boosted up a bit. And then we could kind of balance them out by using the fader here. Now since I have pitch hooked up here, I also in the original did use an envelope. Um, just the BCV ADSR. And uh, basically, we can have this govern the amplitude. Like, I'm going to let the drone stay. Now, this is where I'm departing from, like, maybe a, just a steady Tibetan singing bowl. Because now we're going to be playing different notes. I'm going to put the envelope on just channel 2. So we hear it go away there for a moment until I press a key. I'll have to hook the gate up over here. Now let's see what happens. Uh, nothing happened. Let me see here. Gate? is hooked up to gate and the output from the envelope is hooked up to volume here okay it's working but it's much lower but also in this I want it to come in slowly so I'm gonna make its attack longer and I'm not gonna have like a decay portion of the envelope let's have it rise to its level this should boost it a bit too
pitch bend for some magic. is a little too quick. And I am going to make the attack even slower so when this sound comes in here we go. Let me back out here a little bit. all pitch bending <laughs> you got to know what you're doing there like a theremin can also do here <clears throat> is hook up the gate there from the envelope generator to this one too so that basically when I'm playing it sounds now its pitch isn't going to change because we don't have pitch going to it but now, when I press a key, it all begins. And whatever note I play, of course, is going to go to these two oscillators, but not to these two. These are stuck on middle C. So I like to start on a G in this case. So yeah, there we go, baby. 
I don't know. I'm digging it. I mean, but you could see uh, along the way different ways of kind of like shifting it different directions if you want to just like to get more of the pure Tibetan singing bowl type of sound. Work with your compressor and your equalizer and uh, you could get those real subtle harmonics to be more in balance with one another. And yeah, I think this comb filtering really helps to kind of like attenuate them a bit. It kind of like um, weeds some of the extra ones out. And and because uh, it's interesting about those singing bowls, they do have the beauty is in the harmonics, but it's in the delicate use of the harmonics. It's not overly saturated. So anyway, uh, hopefully you found this useful and liked it. Um, I also want to do a big shout out here at the end to uh, Mike Gorley, who's been following my videos. He's a fantastic flautist and a string player. Uh, everything from like a koto to a, I think he said he has um, a sitar and uh, some of these really exotic uh, ethnic instruments from around the world. And he creates beautiful music. I'm going to leave his link to his YouTube channel in the description. Anybody into beauty? Uh, should check that out but uh otherwise you know please hit that like button leave a comment let me know what you think um it'll keep me from being lonely and then um until next time you better take care and stay free